Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential trigonometric equation. How nice it can get, right? We have 2 to the power sine squared x plus 2 to the power cosine squared x equals 2. And we're going to be solving for x values. Well, this kind of looks wrong, right? We hope we know that the Pythagorean theorem tells us sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1 and 2 to the power 1 equals 2. But it's not wrong because this is not an identity, it's an equation. So that's the difference. Now, to be able to solve this equation, we're going to be using the Pythagorean theorem though. How do we use it? Let's start with the equation, which is the Pythagorean theorem for trigonometry. What is it? It is sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one. Now, if you wanna know what that looks like, in basic trigonometry, they kind of show you trigonometry and a right triangle, right? So they say this is A, this is A, B, C. Write sine and cosine based on their de definitions, add them up, and then use the Pythagorean theorem, and you're going to get this identity. This is an identity. How do we use it in this equation? Let's go ahead and explore. All right, so we have a really weird exponential equation. Why? Because the exponents are different, I mean, not only that, not only that, the two exponential expressions are being added. That makes things harder, much harder. For example, if I had something like 2 to the power sine squared plus 3 to the power cosine squared, then this equation would be like impossible to solve analytically, not like numerically. I'm not talking about numerical analysis because I don't I should say I don't like it, but I'm not a big fan, maybe I should say, a nicer way of saying it. But anyways, this is a non-standard transcendental equation. So we have to use a special approach. In this case, we have an identity we can use. So how do we use that identity? We can go ahead and actually isolate one of these. Which one do you want to do? Let's do cosine. So to isolate cosine from this equation or cosine squared, I can write it as one minus sine squared. Now in some cases, we need to find cosine in terms of sine, but that answer is not unique because if you take the square root from the absolute value, you're gonna get the plus minus sine and depending on the quadrant, the value that you're looking for, you know, it varies, but we're good because we do need cosine squared, not cosine. Now, we're going to go ahead and substitute that right here. I mean right here. Oops. Right here. That's okay. That's probably a highlighter or something. Anyways, you get the idea. So we have 2 to the power sine squared plus 2 to the power cosine squared, which can be written as 1 minus sine squared equals 2. Now, did it really make things simpler? It doesn't look like it, right? It kind of looks the same, sort of. Maybe it's even more complicated because... With a single expression in the exponent, now you have two things. But here's the good part. Now we have the difference. So that's the power of substitution. Whenever you have something like 2 to the power cosine squared, you can't really do much with it, can you? Well, one thing you can do is you can write this as 2 to the cosine x to the power cosine x, but I don't think that's going to be very helpful. But if you have a dis difference like this one, that's really nice because you can split them up. So properties of exponents, something that you, I've been thinking about making a video for a long, long time, but I never had a chance or I forgot. And I'm lazy, obviously, you know me probably. But here's the thing. Whenever you have something like a to the power m minus n, it can be written as a to the m divided by a to the m. Of course, this works both ways. And generally, they give uh, properties like this. But I think this is more helpful. You get the idea. What happens if you have the sum of exponents, then of course it, you can break it down into a product. You see, these properties are super helpful and when you learn logarithms, they will be super helpful as well. Now, let's go ahead and see how we can split it up. This gives us two to the power sine squared x and now I have the difference, so I'm gonna write it as two to the power one divided by two to the power sine squared. You see how it nicely separates into a quotient. Now, that's not the best part. The best part is we have this thing twice. Uh-oh, take a look. Again, that calls for the S word. What's the S word? Substitution, of course, right? It's one of my favorite methods. So let's go ahead and call this something. How about U? Yes, we're gonna call that U, and now it becomes U 
plus 2 over u. 2 to the power 1 is 2, by the way, so I don't need to write the exponent. Equals 2. Can you guess what u is going to be? Yes, you should be able to. But if you couldn't, don't worry about it, because I'll show you how to solve it. How do you solve it? You multiply everything by u. u squared plus 2 equals 2u. And yes, if it's your birthday, happy birthday to you. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put everything on the same side. And we're going to go ahead and solve it. Wait a minute. I was hoping that u equals 1 would be a solution, isn't it? Well, if you replace u with 1, you get 2 plus 1 is not 2. Okay, it doesn't work. Anyways, my guess didn't work, but that's okay because this is really, really cool. You'll see now. How do you solve it? Quadratic formula or completing square, whichever you like. But I really like the uh, completing the square method because I can write it like this. And actually, this kind of shows you also how to write a parabola in the form, the vertex. So remember, it's a times x minus h quantity squared plus k equals a y. And you can also write it as f of x. And this is just a parabola whose vertex is given. Anyways. I digress, let's go back here. This is zero. This means I'm gonna isolate it and write it equal to negative one. Uh-oh, we come across a non-real number, <laughs> yes. Well, in this case, we're gonna have to square root both sides and the square root of negative one doesn't ex exist in the real world, but there's another world in which it exists, which is called the complex world. Ta-da, and it's called I. But because of the absolute value, not because negative 1 has two square roots, because one of them is the principal square root. Anyways, there are actually two numbers of squares negative 1. So in that sense, it has two square roots. But we're going to put a plus minus sign, which means u can be written as 1 plus minus i. By the way, if you like complex numbers, go ahead and check out a plus bi, another channel of mine, which focuses on complex numbers and ask a lot of questions. All right. Now, u is equal to 1 plus minus i, but what is u? <laughs> Who are u? u is 2 to the power sine squared. So we're going to now set u equal to this. Let's just do it with one of them. And what is that supposed to mean? Well, we need to do the following. We need to write 1 plus i in exponential form. Ta-da! How do you do that? Now think about how to plot 1 comma 1 like this. This is 1 plus i. So it makes an angle of pi over 4 radians. And what you can do is you can look at the Pythagorean theorem. This is 1, 1, root 2. Its modulus is root 2. So we can write this as root 2 times e to the power i times pi over 4. Of course, that's not the only answer. We can also add multiples of 2 pi, but we're going to leave it to a plus bi. Here, we're just going to keep it very simple. What am I going to do with this type of thing, though? Well, you can go ahead and actually write this in exponential form as well. How do you do that? Well, we can replace 2 with e to the power ln 2 and then multiply these two things. You're going to get e to the power ln 2 times sine squared x equals root 2 times e to the power i pi over 4. Again, this is only one of the solutions and I'm just going to go with that one. Now, you can go to natural log both sides. That's going to give you ln 2 times sine squared of x equals ln root 2 plus i times pi over 4. Now, we do need to find sine squared of x. And if you divide both sides by ln 2, you're going to get something like this. If only this was 0, so this would turn into 1 half. And then sine squared x could be 1 half. Sine x could be 1 over root 2, so on and so forth. We would be able to find something nice. But in this case, we're not getting anything nice because sine x needs to be the square root of this. And then uh, what are we going to do? We're going to do the arc sine and so on and so forth. But I'm going to leave it as an exercise for you because I think you can do it. And let me tell you why we got a complex answer, even though I was hoping for a real answer because here's how I came up with this problem. Let me just tell you real quick so you can see the backhand story. So here's what I was doing. I said, okay, what if sine squared x is equal to 1, which means sine can be 1 or negative 1? From Pythagorean theorem, cosine squared in that case is going to be 0. So I said, okay, 2 to the power 1 is going to be 2 plus 0. Uh-oh. I messed up. My arithmetic is not very good. So I thought 2 plus 
uh, I thought this was going to be 0 for some reason, but it's 2 to the power 0. So 2 to the 1 plus 2 to 0 does not equal 2. Too bad, but that's what happened. But again, you got the complex version of that problem. So change this 2 to a 3, and you're going to get my original thought, which did not realize in this video. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI. And bye-bye.